All right, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to this last session of the day before the party. Yeah. But before that, taking Viz and tooltips to the next level. Ooh, what does it all mean? <laughs> Hopefully you'll discover by the end of this uh, session. So let's start with a quick show of hands. First of all, who here has used Viz and tooltips before? Everyone, amazing. And who here thought that Viz and tooltips was just inserting the Viz in the tooltip and then waiting for Tablet to do its magic and nothing else? So the rest of you, you assume that there's something that you can do about it that you'll discover today. So my name is Gaetan Belby. I'm part of the solutions consulting team uh, based out of London. And I actually just moved to Paris a couple weeks ago for cheese and wine and baguette and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and so I actually serve our customers in sub-Saharan Africa. I help them be successful with our products, and I help them deploy Tableau. And I'm joined today by Munal, who will introduce himself. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Renan Schroeder, and I'm the Solutions Consulting Manager for uh, Nordics, Benelux, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, if I were to crack a Tableau joke, uh, if you were to group these regions, you would call it the other, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> um, it's just a random collection of regions, right? Um, I would say that you know, I have the privilege of any season, any time of the year, and I have access to sun any time of the year, <laughs> right? I'm based out of London, uh, and we also have a team in Amsterdam and Stockholm, and now one person in Paris, too. Vive la France. All right, so let's get started. Let's start with this little uh, line that I picked out of Stephen Fuse's book, Information Dashboard Design. If you read this, it's not about fitting furniture in a room, okay? It's about fitting information on a dashboard or in a visualization, right? So if you wanna put in a whole bunch of information in one place, it doesn't require mu muscles, right? It requires finesse. If I were to be allowed, I'll switch that to you need vision tooltips. <laughs> okay. Uh, because, you know, we are always struggling to figure out what goes where, you know, uh, if it's the right place or not. Um, with vision tooltips, these always have that secondary place, right? Where, where your information can go. So I know a lot of you already know how to make Vizin tooltip. Uh, so let me still uh, jump into it, because there are a few things that I think are worth mentioning. Okay? So uh, with Vizin tooltip, how do you add it? Well, pretty straightforward, right? You just go to tooltip. Uh, let's just say I want to remove this one. Uh, insert, come in over here. And I want to, let's say, plug in incidents over time. Now, before I, in fact, even start plugging in the sheet, let me just share with you what this data is. So this data set is uh, all the um, 911 calls to New Orleans Police Department, right, over the years. Um, so it's got, as you would imagine, you know, incident types, you know, locations, zip codes, and so on, okay? So um, what I have here, as you can see, this is just all the zip codes on a map, right? And I just want to plot all the incidents over a period of time in a Vizin tooltip, right? So I've just inserted that. Once I do that, I can see that I've got my incidents uh, over time in, in Vizin tooltip. And if I hit OK, guess what? I hover over these different points, and, and I get my view that I'm looking for. Now, one thing I'm sure you already know, but for those of you who don't know, right, this is not interactive, right, the Vizin tooltip. It's actually an image. It's a PNG, to be precise. Okay, so uh, how does that happen? Well, it, it, you basically have this markup to play with. Okay, so let me see if I can select this and make it a little bit bigger for you. Right, so in this markup, uh, there are some rules to follow, right? So the sheet name, this element, right, this is case sensitive. Okay, so you should always have capital S. When it comes to other attributes like for size, which is max width, and max height, these are not case sensitive, okay? So you can uh, use whatever case you want. Uh, filter, same thing, right? It's not case sensitive. Now, by default, you can see that Tableau always puts in at 300 pixels, okay? You are, you're free to change it to whatever you want, right? So I can change it to 600 or whatever else I want. With filters, by default, Tableau will pass all the fields as a filter, okay? Now, 
if you want to have precise control over what fields get passed, guess what? You can insert your selected field in there as well. Okay, so rather than passing all fields, you can have control. But if you leave it empty, then Tableau will not pass any filter. Okay? By the way, you don't need to include all these attributes when you write your markup. Okay? So I can actually just leave them out completely, okay? and you'll still see that my tooltips work. Okay? So max width, max height, the size attributes, filter, they're optional. Okay? So if you don't want it, uh, you can just leave them out. Right? So that's a really quick one on within tooltip and some, some uh, you know, requirements around the markup. So let's just uh, carry on and look into what is Wizen Tooltip and how does it actually work. So Wizen Tooltip actually shares a lot of commonalities with action filters. In fact, the underlying architecture of Wizen Tooltips is built upon action commands. Okay? So what it basically does is you have two sheets okay, linked to each other, and you're passing filter from one sheet to the other. Okay? And the difference here is that that whole action is triggered on hover rather than, let's say, select or a menu item. Okay? It's that straightforward. But why am, I, why am I talking about this? Because it's important to understand how different features are implemented, because there's where you can get really, really creative and, and, and crazy with the sort of you know, uh, cool things you can do with it. Right? So let me, let me jump back in and show you what I mean by that. Right? So we build this tooltip. Right? Let's just go into uh, this little dashboard where I have that same map and bring in that view that I had in my vision tooltip, which was incidents over time, and drop that here and see what happens when I start hovering over this. Is this cool? I think it's cool. Right? This is to demonstrate right, that it is actually using action commands and action filters underneath. Right? I didn't even have to go ahead and, and build any action from it. Right? So I didn't have to go to dashboard and actions and build that one. Why is this important? Because once you appreciate how it's working, right, here's where you can start s stretching the limits of what's possible with, with Wizen Tooltip. Okay? So, Gethon here is actually going to run us through some really, really cool examples using Wizen tooltips. But what I wanted to do is uh, run you through some academic parts, so design considerations and so on. But before I do that, uh, sorry, just got misplaced. So let's just look into some design considerations first, in fact. Um, if you're building a Wizen tooltip and you got, let's say, a Wiz, which is going to be more than 600 pixels, um, ask yourself a question if it is the right visual to go in the Wizen tooltip. The reason for that is when you're hovering over a mark, you still want to see underlying data, right? If that view now takes over your entire screen, then it's kind of pointless because you lose perspective on what you are hovering over, right? And the, I mean, this is not you know, scientifically <laughs> uh, established, right? But 600 pixels is more or less something that you can work with. Anything beyond, you know, it's too much for that screen size. <laughs> also, uh, continuous access, you know, so let's say uh, incidents over time, right? It's a continuous access. That's not part of the presentation. <laughs> Uh, continuous access generally actually scales quite nicely, right? So you can, you can make it 600 pixels, 500, 400, and so on. Anything lower than 200 pixels uh, is kind of difficult, right? Because then you can't see the distance between, let's say, different bars, right? It's, it's kind of hard to read, right? So when it comes to continuous access, I would say, like, try not to go lower than 200 pixels, okay? So that's on uh, how you should consider. But there are a few things which I really want you to think uh, hard about, okay? So one of that is I really, really hope you don't try to put in massive text tables in there, right? Uh, I don't really think it's the place for it, <laughs> right? Um, because discrete access, they don't scale that well, okay? Um, imagine like you have a 1,000 rows okay, of, of text per mark in a Wizen tooltip. 
it's kind of pointless, right? Um, also, the text will not automatically scale, right? So the font's not gonna automatically adjust itself. And uh, you, know, you don't really know how many dimensions you have, how it's gonna fit into uh, your, your vision tooltip. If you are going to use discrete axis, though, I would recommend that you use the uh, fit settings on a view, right? So the fit settings would be uh, you know, this guy, right, over here. So, whoops, let's go in here. It's this one. Right, so make it make it fit width or fit height. Right, so at least at least the behavior is is predictable. Okay. So don't want to spend too much time in PowerPoint because you are here to actually see Tableau. Right. So let me pass it on to Gaethan, who's going to run you through some really really cool examples. And once he's done that, then I want to actually run you through uh, some academic side of, of Vizin tooltips. So under the hood, what's actually happening, right? And also introduce you to what's coming next in uh, Vizin tooltips. Thank you, Munal. Is that a train? Sounds like a train. So uh, what I want to do is actually go through five uh, different examples with you. We'll be looking at how we can play around with the markup a little bit to control what actually goes in the Vizin tooltip. We'll be looking at uh, formatting as well and how formatting can really help design viz and tooltips that uh, go way beyond just a simple viz. We'll also be looking at adding images in viz and tooltips. And then finally, I've got a couple examples from some Zen masters that I think uh, are quite amazing and that I want to re-engineer with you and show you how, how they built that. So this first uh, visualization, we're, we're still using the NOPD calls uh, for the past uh, few years. And we're looking at trends by police district um, as well as weekdays and number of incidents per month and weekdays and trends per, per weekday. So what I'd like to do is actually have my incidents by zip map appear when I hover above each of these points here in my trends. So pretty simple, we all know how to do that. The vision tooltip, my insert menu, incident by zip and that's it. So what's happening here is when I'm hovering over these points, Tableau is actually using this all fields parameter filter that we saw earlier that we now mentioned. So this part here, the all fields. And this is actually filtering on all of the fields that are available in the viz. So we're filtering by police district, but also by date. Now say I wanted to actually only filter by date and not police district. So what I could do is just replace this all fields filter and insert one of the fields that are somewhere into my canvas in my view or in my marks card. So the field actually needs to be in your marks card or on your rows or columns so you can add it over here. So my day time create, which is my date field I'm using at the top, now then allows me to just filter on the date and not on the district. So I've controlled what the filtering is happening. So it's a bit like filter actions. If you're familiar with those, you can choose specifically what fields are gonna be used for filtering. Now something else I can control is actually the size of this uh, vision tooltip. And we mentioned it earlier, but let's say I wanted to go uh, and make it max width 600 and 400 pixels. Then I can use my little preview button here to just verify that that size is okay or that the vision tooltip that I'm putting in here is okay as well. So now I've got a much larger vision tooltip and maybe it's easier for you to see the variance in values actually in each of the zip codes as I move along. So um, something else that I could do to make this a little bit more flexible for my end user is actually use parameters for the user to control what goes in the markup. So for those of you who are not familiar with parameters, they're actually just a, a value that the user can input. It can be a string value, an integer value, a date value, and then that value feeds into a calculation that can then affect a viz. So the end user from his dashboard, from the web interface, can actually choose what values goes through into the calculation and then how it affects the visualization. So in this case, what I'd like to do is parameters that will allow my user to control the width and the height of the viz and tooltip right from the dashboard without having to go in editing mode. So I'll create the first parameter, my tooltip width. And that's gonna be an integer. Obviously, it's a number that I wanna create for that user and I'm gonna create a range, so then he has a nice little slider that allows him to go up to 600, so we respect Munal's good recommendation. And I'll just set the default value to uh, 300, oh, the default value to 300, sorry, the current value. All right, 
So my second parameter is obviously going to be the one that will control the height. So I can just duplicate to make it easy for me to recreate the height parameter. OK. And the next step is I actually need those parameters to feed into a calculated field and the calculated field to generate the markup that will go into the tooltip. So the calculated field can actually just write a, a simple string into your viz. So it will work the same way here. Uh, we'll just write a simple string that's coming from the calculated field into the tooltip. So because I've already created the markup uh, using the native features, I don't have to write it entirely. I'm just going to copy paste it from here. And I'm going to insert it into my calculated field. Let me make this a bit bigger. And just make sure that this is actually a string. So I'm going to put the two speech marks at the end and at the beginning. So Tableau now is just simply uh, writing a string. When I put this calculated field onto my viz, if it's in uh, the text mark, it'll just write the string onto the view. If it's in the tooltip, it'll actually write this markup in the tooltip. And the tooltip uh, function will actually be able to react and understand that this has to be a viz and generate a viz out of it. So let's call this tooltip settings. Now something to uh, take into account, and that's a feature that's not yet implemented that uh, I'd really like to see, is actually uh, Tableau is not able to pass the filter component into the markup in the tooltip. So actually, in the calculated field, I don't need this, and I won't be able to pass that filter component. I can only pass the width and the size and the sheet names. So and I'll show you a little trick, actually, to make sure that we're still filtering on the fields that we choose after we're using this calculated field to generate the tooltip. It'll all make sense when I, when I do it. OK, so uh, the next step is actually replacing those uh, string values for the max width and max height by the parameter values that the user will choose. So the parameter at the moment is an integer. And I want to make sure that I'm going to create a string out of it. So I'm going to use a string function to convert it. And because it's a string that I need to attach to the rest of my string, I'm going to use the two little plus signs that allows me to do this. And inside the string is going to be my tooltip width. OK, so what's happened is over here now, the value that's going to come in there will depend on what the user has selected in the parameter. I'm going to do exactly the same thing for my tooltip height. I'm just going to change the name so it's the height. It's controlled by the other parameter. OK, done. So now this tooltip settings calculation, I can put it in my tooltip. And what I need to make sure for the filtering scenario that I talked about earlier, because we won't be able to control the filtering through the calculated field string generated value, I'm actually, I just need to keep that sheet here, the sheet that I entered earlier. I need to keep that so the filtering on day time create actually occurs. And then I can just add my tooltip settings. So this will essentially just be replaced. Tableau will read the string that's in that calculated field. And then so the sheet below that that will act as the filter doesn't show. I'm just going to set the max height and max width to 1, so it's just completely hidden. All right. Now let's just show our parameter values. Perfect. Now when I hover, we have a 300 by 300 pixel view. And if I just increase the width, let's say, to 600, now we're actually controlling what's actually gone in there. So this example, I mean, you know, it, it could be relevant, for example, when users are using different types of screens or they have different types of detail in the viz that they want to zoom into so they have a bit of a, bit of a wider view. Um, obviously, if, if they're in a the mobile, you don't want it to be 600 times 300, maybe a little bit smaller than that so they can control it. Uh, there are quite a few other things you can do with parameters. And one example I just want to show you, it's, it's already made, but it's, I think it's an interesting one as well, is choosing what visualization goes into the Viz and tooltip. So when I hover over uh, a specific zip code here, I'm seeing the trends by uh, hour and, and, uh, week, and weekday. And then I've got a parameter here on the top right that allows me to change the type of Viz and show me something like a heat map by hour and weekday. So how did we do this? So first of all, we have a parameter again that will just simply generate two string values. One is the name, well, it's actually the name of the sheet. It, these string values can be anything, and it actually won't do anything before you attach it to a calculated field, for those of you who are familiar with parameters. 
And in my calculated field, what I have actually is a simple case statement that will evaluate what value was selected from the user in the parameter and then generate one markup over the other. Okay? So same just with the case statement. And then we've added this to the tooltip, obviously. So we have our tooltip this attribute. And then we still also added both of these sheets. So then we make sure that the filtering actually occurs and we made that one times one. Okay. So moving on to uh, my second example, uh, this one will look actually a little bit more at uh, formatting and how formatting can allow you to create things that are really out, not, well, out, kind of out of the box actually. Um, so in this case, uh, the viz we're looking at is a pretty simple one. It's looking at uh, average, uh, average time to arrival from an agent uh, from the moment he was dispatched to the moment he arrives to the scene, the number of incident by the type of incident, and we've created a nice little word cloud. And what I'd like to do is actually provide my user with a lot more context as soon as he hovers above one of these words. So the main, the main viz is just this word cloud. I don't need anything else. I don't need a complex dashboard. I just want the user to get instant information and a lot of contextual information as soon as he hovers above it. So what I've got for this is uh, information on weekdays. I've got seasonality information. I've got top 10 zip codes. And then I've got the top 10 NOPD zones that I can compare that with. So how am I going to put all this in a single vision tooltip? So first of all, uh, one thing that's important is uh, always using the dynamic titles that you can put and you know, playing around as well with how you can make your, your tooltips dynamic with the text and the values. The next step I want to do is uh, a bit like if I'm designing a dashboard, I want to create you know, a nice separation, a nice title at the top, maybe some side-by-side -side visualizations, maybe an a vis that takes the whole width, depending on how important they are. So to create some separation uh, and a nice little line, I've actually done a completely empty sheet. I've called this row divider. This sheet has absolutely nothing in there. And actually when I add this sheet in my vis and tooltip, my row divider, I'm gonna set the max height to nine so it makes a nice little line. And the width 500 is gonna be the maximum width for this specific vis and tooltip. So what this has done is actually just create that nice little line underneath my title and it creates just a separator for the rest of my dashboard and viz, and it dashboard and tooltip, but I wouldn't call it like that. <laughs> Muna will argue against me. Yes, not so now. I would say. <laughs> not now, not now. Not now? Okay, <laughs> I'll go away. <laughs> okay, so. Um, so the next part is actually adding my sheets. So I've got my weekdays ranked. Uh, again, 500 is going to be the max width. I want to match it to uh, what I've got for my title and for my uh, sheet separator. And the height, this actually just requires 50. So you see it's starting to look like something interesting. Underneath that, I'd like to add my seasonality sheet. Again, I'll match it to the width of the other sheets. And I'll just make this one 200. Okay, starting to look interesting. Now next up, I'm gonna add another separator. The next section is gonna be a little bit different. And uh, to actually duplicate a sheet in a vision tooltip, you can't reinsert it. It'll be uh, blanked out. So my row divider is blanked out, so I actually need to copy paste it. And then going down, one more. I'm gonna add my top 10 zip codes. And so these are the top 10 and I wanna put them side by side. Now the way you do this is you make sure that both sheets are actually stuck right next to each other. So this, there should be no space, there should be no going down the line. So both these sheets should be right next to each other. And then the max width of both sheets should actually match the max width of the total that I have which is 500. So I'm gonna make this to 50. Quick preview, we can't see much, but now, voila. Yeah. I feel like I'm a magician, <laughs> but it's just Tableau. <laughs> tableau is kind of magic. Okay. So should I jump in now? Yeah, you can actually talk. Yeah, now I see, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sure some of you are thinking, why could I not just simply put a dashboard in there, right? 
uh, why, why did I have to you know, uh, use the mockup to place all these different visualizations together? Now, the argument here is that, you know, yes, there is, there is a, a use case for it, certainly, right? But most often than not, a dashboard is not just a simply a collection of views put together, right? The value of dashboard is interactivity as well between those visualizations, where you go from one visualization to the other, you filter things, highlight things, right? Uh, so that's number one. You're not going to get that here. This is static, right? Second is that over here, Vision Tooltip, it's hovering over a particular mark, one mark. Imagine you're filtering your whole dashboard on one mark. What are you going to get? Nothing, <laughs> right? It's kind of pointless, right? So your normal dashboard is probably not the right place for a Vision Tooltip, right? Maybe in future, if it would just have its own Vision Tooltip editor, right, where we could just put it all together nicely without having to uh, hack around with mockup, right? Would be kind of cool. Right. But in the meantime, we keep doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Munal. So there, there's, there's actually a few uh, creative things you can do with multiple visualizations in a tooltip. And there's one um, that uh, Jeffrey Schaffer, one of our Zen masters, actually created that I think is, is really interesting. And it's the following. So this one actually. Um, is a vis that you can't do in any sheet in Tableau. You can't do with show me, you can't do in any way. And the only place you can actually do this is, with the, is in the vis in tooltip. So we have a heat map in the middle that's showing us the breakdown of month and the correlation with um, weekday, and then the totals as well at the top for average dispatch times for weekdays and then for months as well. So the way he's done this is, first of all, we simply have a few sheets. So we have three sheets. The first sheet is a bar chart. Um, we removed all of the noise from this bar chart, you may notice. So the grid lines, the titles, the headers, they're all removed. We just have the labels. Uh, this one is actually uh, the heat map where we do have those labels, so the uh, month and weekdays. And then the incident by month, which is uh, just a horizontal bar chart. Now that uh, also doesn't show the headers. And so the way this is actually done, if I just remove those two first sheets, So this first sheet is simply going to be the vertical bar chart on its own with no labels, nothing. The second sheet, let me remove the third one. There we go. The second sheet is going to be the heat map right underneath, so stacked like I did earlier. And then the third one is just going to be a side-by-side -side sheet, which then gives you that, th that type of visualization. So a pretty clever trick, and allows you to actually do something that's not very common with Tableau vis visualizations. So another way you can be creative with uh, types of marks in Vizin tooltips is actually adding images. Now for this particular example, um, we couldn't get the uh, crime scenes from the NOPD, so I can't show you these images specifically. <laughs> But instead, uh, I actually have images of royal palaces across the United Kingdom. I also have uh, who are the residents of these royal palaces and owners, the exact location, and a small picture. Let me actually increase that size, but a small picture of each of the royal palaces that actually are coming from a file uh, that's on my computer. And that file, uh, ha each of these pictures have a name that match perfectly the name of the data points. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with shapes, shapes are a type of data uh, mark, or sorry, a visualization mark you can add in Tableau. And you can customize completely the shapes that you're adding. So we've got a, a range of preset shapes. But in this case, I've got my uh, custom shapes that I've added and matched to my data points. So what I need to do, obviously now I've got each of these uh, locations for royal palaces. Let me just add my residence. That's going to be who actually lives in there, if anyone. And then the picture, which is just a picture sheet. And voila. So that's also a neat trick. There are some amazing examples on Tableau Public that I would recommend you, uh, you go check out. Um, if you just type images in Vision Tooltip, uh, really good use cases of how images in Vision Tooltips can be useful. 
Okay, so I've got uh, two more examples, and uh, the first one, so actually these two more examples are a little bit more complex, uh, but the first one comes from uh, Alan Ald Aldridge. And uh, what he managed to create actually is, or find a way to be able to zoom into very, very dense data. So say, for example, you have a scatter plot with lots of points, or you have a map like this one where we have 80,000 points, more or less, 68,000 points, sorry. Um, it's pretty hard to actually see at the street level what's happening. And probably what you could do is maybe zoom into the map uh, or you could filter, but it kind of breaks the, the thought process and it kind of breaks the, the whole you know, nice animation that you can get. So what I'd want to do is actually, as soon as I hover above one of these points, is Tableau to show me a tooltip with a zoomed in view to the street level to actually see a parameter, a parameter around uh, where, I'm zo where I'm hovering over. So I've got a second sheet that will feed into my vision tooltip, and that's the, the magnified uh, sheet. So this one is just, at the moment, at a very high level, and the points are just a little bit thicker because as I'm zooming in, obviously, you know, it's better to have slightly thicker marks. And so what I need to do here is um, actually create a filter value that will round up my x and y axes depending on where I'm hovering. So if I'm hovering above a specific, in this case, latitude or longitude, or longitude I want Tableau to round up that latitude and longitude and then show me a new viz uh, with those filters in. So the way I do it, I'm going to do this is create two calculated fields. The first one is the rounded longitude, and I'm going to round it to do two decimals. Now, obviously, this could be parameterized, so the user can choose his level of zoom, and this could, be, this could affect both the y and x axis as well if you're just doing that on a normal scatter plot. And my second is going to be uh, the rounded latitude, also two decimals. Okay, I'm just going to make sure these are both dimensions as I want to be filtering on dimensions. Add that to my details so I can add them and insert them in my tooltip later. Perfect, and now inserting my sheet, my magnified vision tooltip. Uh, because this is going to be a zoomed-in view, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. So 600 times 600, pushing the limits for now. <laughs> <laughs> and my filter values are now going to be this R latitude and comma R longitude. The reason I'm putting the comma is just because I have multiple dimensions I'm filtering on, and this would work with any sort of dimension, a bit like with filter actions when you're adding multiple uh, dimensions, this is the same thing. I could add whatever I want here. Okay, and now when I hover, and right, I'm zooming into a much greener and more, deep, more interesting level maybe. So also, you may notice that you know, in this map, particularly, I've got a bit more background. I've got street information, street names, and with some of the things that we've released uh, today and that we announced today this morning with mapping, I think you know, that could also go, be a good example. Maybe have a satellite view of your house or something. <laughs> 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 or the Royal Palace, maybe. <laughs> okay, so for the final example, um, this one actually comes from an, uh, another Zen master, uh, Matt Chambers. I think both of them are actually here this week. Um, so if you do see them, tell them thank you from us. <laughs> Uh, but this one actually will allow the user to conditionally get a viz in the tooltip. So depending on what the user has clicked on, we will show a viz over another. So for this example, I've got two vizes. I've got one that's giving me call types and incidents, and then another map uh, with uh, information on the exact location of an incident. So what I'd like to do is, if a user is hovering above one of these zip codes, I will show the call types. If he clicks on the zip code, it will show the zoomed in zip code level of all the incidents. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is actually evaluate what the user has clicked on and the number of values the user has clicked on. And I'm gonna use our Windows sum calculation. There we go, let me make this bigger. So the Windows sum count distinct of a zip code. So essentially this will look at across the whole window, across all the zip codes, how many zip codes have we selected? And I'm gonna make this a Boolean, so if it's equal to one, give me true. If it's equal to zero or anything else, give me false. Okay? 
And so in this calculation that I pre-created for you, actually I've got my conditional of this in tooltip here, which is the calculated field I just wrote. And then it's another this case statement saying, if it's true, then give me sheet A. If it's false, give me sheet B. All right. Now let me put this in my Vizint tooltip. Oh, something I absolutely need to do as well because my window sum is a calculation, is a window uh, calculation, table calculation, sorry. I just need to make sure it's computed using zip. And then I can add this calculation to my Vizint tooltip and never forget to add the filtering sheets as well. So my call types and my conditional VIT map down to one. All right, that should do the trick. So now when I hover above a zip code, it shows me the call types. And if I click on one of those zip codes, now it actually zooms into the area. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so thank you, thank you very much. Uh, this is it for me. So yeah, we've seen how we can play with the markup, how parameters can allow you to control things. Calculated fields can feed into tooltips. Uh, there's lots of awesome examples on the, online and with the community that I'd encourage you to see. And uh, yeah, we now will now take you through performance considerations and what to expect with 2018.3 and later versions. Thank you very much. All right, so I get to spend time in PowerPoint and he gets Tableau, it's unfair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's jump manager. back in here. <laughs> so, you know, you've seen all these cool tricks, right? Um, but then, I guess you don't just get there by chance, right? You get there by learning how things are working, right? Um, how it was built, the inner workings under the hood, what's going on, right? You need to know that. So what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna run you through uh, exactly that, right? The inner workings of Tableau, how it's rendered, the performance side of things, caching, and all of that good stuff, okay? So, uh, how does rendering happen? Okay, so there are a few steps. Now, when you hover over a mark, underneath there's lots going on, okay? So first, when you hover over a mark, what Tableau does, it right away, uh, you know, will give you the Uber tip. Now, how many of you know what's an Uber tip? So Uber tip is basically the standard stuff that you see when you hover over, uh, you know, a mark, the normal tooltip. And now we also have uh, it as a filter, right? So you can click, let's say if you've got category in the tooltip, you can actually click on it and have it do something, right? So that we can just right away uh, bring up for you, okay, not a problem. Then the next thing what we do is for that specific mark, we pass the filter to the target sheet, meaning the sheet which is gonna come up in the vision tooltip, okay? And once we do that, then we check and see if we already got some of those images, right? The vision tooltip images in the cache already, okay? So if we got that, then guess what? We'll just simply give you that. We don't need to do any work. If we don't have that, Okay, then we're actually gonna go calculate the visual model and then you know, put together a nice little you know, uh, image and then give it back to the end user. Right? Now why am, I, why am I actually sharing that with you? Um, it's just so that you appreciate that there's actually a lot going on. Right? So although like, it just appears almost instantaneous, behind the scene you're actually passing filters. You're running queries, right? There's lots going on. Um, when you have Vizin tooltips, um, you know, and you take a particular workbook or a dashboard and you publish it onto server, uh, it can actually be a little bit slower if you've got network latency. So what I mean by that is the rendering of Vizin tooltips actually happens on server, okay? So server sh creates these images and ships it to your browser, okay? Rather than doing browser-based rendering, okay? Now, why is it important? Again, right, the other performance considerations to it. So, what are the performance considerations? Well, primarily there are two steps when we are putting together a Vizin tooltip, okay? So the first piece is when you hover over a mark, for that Vizin tooltip, you need to grab data, right, before you can put together that visual on top. So what Tableau does is 
grabs this query, gets the result set, and then does rasterization, which is putting the visual model and then converting it into a PNG. Okay? So the query part actually can be uh, time consuming at times, right? So imagine if you're connected live to your database and your database is slow. Guess what? You know, um, the, the vision tooltip might not be that instantaneous, right? If you have visualizations which actually are relying on complex queries, right, and we are sending it back to the database for that, again, you know, the query, the query component can actually take some time. Now, there are some tricks around it, right? In fact, I'm just gonna uh, show you one uh, right now where if, let's say, uh, Tableau is spending a lot of time just querying the data for your vision tooltip, you can actually pre-cache it, okay? Um, this little trick stays with us, okay? Um, <laughs> all right. So the way that you do it is, uh, where did mine go? All right. So let's say I got this same visualization from um, uh, the previous example, right, where I'm hovering over it and I get a vision tooltip. Now, in this case, there are not that many data points. It's fast. But let's say that, you know, this was actually taking a long time to process. Um, what you can do is you can have another sheet which brings in all the data beforehand so we don't need to generate a new query. What I mean by that is we have incidents over time, right, this particular view coming in. Now the original view looks something like this, right? And whenever we hover over a mark, Tableau is passing a filter at zip code level every single time. But instead, if I just bring in this zip and then uh, throw it in detail, so now I've got all the zips, and I've also got my time series. I've got all the data that I need to then just stick rasterization process on top or stick an image on top, right? I don't need to basically go back to my database. And uh, not this. So what I should do then is now that I've added zip to my detail, I can just bring this guy into my dashboard. So let me just drop it in here. And here's where I'll have to get a bit creative, right? So I can just take that, make it a bit small, and then come in here and then just make it disappear. Right? So I feel a bit dirty. I'll have to go take a shower after this. <laughs> but it works, right? So what you're doing is you're just basically pre-caching all the data that you need for your vision tooltip, right? So imagine you've got a bunch of visualizations you can have with this one master sheet which just pre-caches all the data when the dashboard loads. Anything after that that you do, we don't have to go back to the database. All right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, then, so that's the demo. When it comes to rasterization, um, you know, you're, you're actually drawing a viz and converting it into a PNG, an image, right? So for that, if you've got smaller vizs going into viz and tilt tip, it's better. The fewer you put, it's better as well. Um, if you don't have complex vizs, so over here, we are just uh, you know, breaking our own rule, right? So we've been showing you maps all along, right? <laughs> but actually, map is a complex whiz, right? It, it does take an extra uh, processing time. So if that is taking time, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that because of the rasterization complexity. Um, but when it comes to performance, the paradigm in vision tooltips is actually uh, different, right? It's more about responsiveness than the raw time that it takes. So what I mean by that is when you're accessing a dashboard, you can be a little bit more patient, because you know that you know, once I get my dashboard, then I'm cool. I can, I can spend time in it, I can filter, I can do things with it. But when it comes to Wiz and Tooltip, you want it to be fast, right? Because you're hovering over, you're not gonna wait for three minutes on that, because by that time you might have moved your uh, cursor to some other map, right? So it's all about responsiveness. And when it comes to responsiveness, uh, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna make people wait. That's the objective, all right? So uh, if it is less than one second when you hover a mark and you know, to get your tooltip, then it's ideal, not a problem. People can wait. In fact, uh, we have built a lag of 200 milliseconds in, in, in Vision tooltip. 
so that you know when people are just simply hovering over the visuals, they might not be interested in digging deeper into it, right? So once you just sit on a mark, it waits for 200 milliseconds before it triggers the job to get the vision tooltip, right? Uh, two seconds is just borderline okay. Anything beyond it, um, it's actually just not good for vision tooltip, right? So um, that's important. So when you um, are an author, right, and you're building vision tooltips, do a lot of testing. Um, it, testing is very, very important. The reason for that is imagine you've got a scatter plot with a whole bunch of marks in there, right? And while you're testing your responsiveness here, uh, you don't know how many data points are underneath that mark, right? So when you're testing, uh, one mark might just have two rows underneath it. Another one might actually have 20,000, right? So the performance on both of them is gonna be completely different, right? So do try to like test it, you know, multiple marks to see if you get that responsiveness that you're looking for. Okay. All right, so what are the recommendations around it? Uh, if you cannot get uh, you know, less than, sorry, uh, two seconds, you should try uh, the mock readers trick. So that's the trick that I showed you, pre-caching one, okay? Um, because querying does take time, especially if it's a complex query. Reduce the complexity of the vizs, right? So remove any maps that you have. Uh, remove any viz that has significant density, mock density. I mean, one could argue it's probably not the right place to put anyways, right? If it's a really, really high density uh, chart or a map in a vision tooltip, you're not gonna get any value out of it, especially with the marks overlapping, right? Um, reduce the number of vizs, right? And finally, reduce the size of the vizs as well. Cool. So that's on how performance, you know, uh, hap I mean, these are the performance considerations when it comes to Wizen tooltips. But that doesn't mean Tableau is not smart around Wizen tooltips, right? So we actually have a whole caching uh, component attached to it as well to make things fast, right? So on server, we actually use your uh, cache server processes to store the uh, Wizen tooltips images, okay? On desktop, we don't do it, because uh, we don't really need it. When it comes to uh, marks, so if it's already been accessed before, then we can just bypass uh, everything, right? We can bypass the query, we can bypass you know, rasterization process, and it'll be really, really fast. However, though, we wanna check, right? We wanna make sure that the data is relevant and it's, it's, it's refreshed, right? So if the data has been refreshed, then of course we, we make the cache invalid, right? And lastly, but quite important, uh, the server cache for Wizen tooltip is actually per user, right? So we don't actually share it across users, again, for some um, obvious reasons here. Cool, so a lot on performance, rendering, and, and, and caching. So what is the current scope of Wizen tooltip? Now, as you know, Wizen tooltip is We'll call it version one, right? Um, since we launched it, we haven't really uh, done a lot on top of it yet, right? So currently what we have is the ability where you hover over one mark, right? One mark, and you get uh, the vision tooltip. And it's only filter selection, right? So it's only passing filter. And what that basically means is you can do stuff like context filter or exclude. So context filter, an example would be, let's say you want top 10 incidents, right, in your vision tooltip, that would be a context filter example. Exclude would be, let's say you hover over a country and you wanna look at sales, which is not part of that country, right? That would be an example of that. So as you, as you can see, that limitation of one mark can be a bit annoying at times, right? Um, because you are sometimes interested in part to whole relationship and analysis of that sort, right? So here's where the new uh, set actions in Tableau is gonna be really, really cool. Uh, it's gonna give us some really, really powerful functionality. So let me show you what I actually mean by that. Let's go in here. And building on uh, Gethan's uh, last example, right? Um, here's a little, um, similar one where I hover over a mark and you can see that you know the, the tooltip updates right to give me the zoomed in map 
And the chart underneath is also updating to give me the top 10 incident types. Okay? Pretty straightforward. But see what happens when I multi-select. Right? So I'm just selecting this marks. And I hover over this. And you see that it's not actually showing my multi-selection. It's only still showing individual zip codes, right? So what if I truly want to do multi-select? So here's where uh, you know, set action is actually going to be really, really cool. So let's, let's do that. So I'm going to go to zip code here and create a simple set. Uh, so let's just say I want to set. And uh, just so that you can see what I'm trying to do, I'm just going to manually select four of them and uh, drop them on uh, my filter. So now we're just focused on those selected zip codes. Okay. I'm going to come into the top 10 incidents uh, you know, bar chart, take the same set, and this time I'm going to drop that on color. So essentially what I see here is, let's just move that here. What I see is the blue bar is those selected zip codes, right? And the gray is everything else, right? Or, or all of them. So I'm doing sort of like an in and out analysis here. So in one case here, I'm filtering. In the other one, I'm just showing you part of the whole relationship, right? So what if I can bring this into my multi-select onto this uh, map that I have, okay? So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, for my uh, set actions, I actually don't want Vision tooltip to pass any filters because these filters are being passed at mark level, right? So I don't want it at uh, individual mark level. In fact, I want to do it for all the zip codes that I select, okay? So I'm going to pass no filters here and hit OK. And then come into my worksheet, actions, and what you'll see is we've got new selection option called change set values, right? So you're going to select that one, and we say, all right, uh, from set actions, I want you to go to NOPD calls this year, and then my target set is this guy. And do it when I select. Right? I hit OK. Let's get out of here. And then what you see is when I hover over this, right? it still is not updating. It's actually still showing me the selections that I had previously. right? So it's still showing me the filter that I had. Okay? It's, not, it's not updating. And the reason for that is I'm actually not passing any filters in my tooltip, right? If I was, it would be updating. So um, what is the benefit of everything that I've done? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you actually select those points, right? And then you hover over it, and right? Now you get multi-select. Am I the only one who thinks it's cool? <laughs> yeah. Right? So now I can actually do multi-select, right? So in this case, I'm filtering. This, the top view is actually filtering, and this one is doing proportional brushing, right? But I can see of the zip codes that I've selected, these are the ones, right, as a part of the whole, right? And I get that in my tooltip. Right, so with set actions, I mean, this is just one um, that we uh, quickly put together. But once we actually launch it, you know, we, we expect some really, really cool applications of set actions with Wizen tooltip as well. All right, so what do you get with set actions and Wizen tooltip? It allows you to select multiple mocks at the same time. But the beauty here is that you can do all sorts of cool things with it. You can run calculations, you can do highlighting, you can do filters, and so on. Okay? Really, really cool things you can do with it. Now, the summary of everything that we've done today, right? Number one, Vision tooltip is simply amazing and everyone loves it. I hope you all agree, <laughs> right? Second one is once you figure out the markup thing, right, um, then you're cool with it. You can do some really, really fun stuff with it. Vision tooltip is not a place, right, for a dashboard, a massive text table, a complex chart. Don't put sand keys in Vision tooltip. Uh, <laughs> High density chart, right? So, so, so scatter plots, you know, with uh, 600,000 marks on it. Probably not a good place for it. Vision tooltips, they used to be best friends with action filters. And Vision tooltips are now going to be best friends with set actions. <laughs> right? Now, this 
session would not be possible without the amazing community that we have, right? Uh, a lot of the examples have come from the community, right? Special thanks goes to um, this four on top, but there are many, many more uh, who've done some fantastic work on vision tooltips. I expect some of you to actually also help with now set actions coming up, right? We'll see some even more applications of that coming up. With that, please, if you enjoyed our session, fill up the survey. If not, still do. <laughs> uh, but thank you for joining us.